might be Sony's smallest best bang for buck camera that you can buy as of right now. This right here, it's a Sony a6700 and Sony really took the a6 series to an entirely new level with this camera right here. Well, let me explain. We got a 26 megapixel back illuminated APS-C sensor for added low light performance, 14 stops of dynamic range when recording video, Sony's new AI based real time autofocus technology for more accurate tracking and subject recognition, up to 11 frames per second for both mechanical and silent shutter for raw photos, 6K oversampling pressed into a 4K full pixel readout with 422 10-bit all the way up to 120 frames per second and 240 frames per second in HD. Advanced image stabilization with up to five stops. Custom picture profiles like S-Log2, S-Log3, and S-Cinetone and with assignable user LUTs. I mean, the list goes on and on, man. It's like I'm getting all the premium high-end features that I would find on like Sony FX3 or the A7S3, but just in a more compact and smaller form. Not to mention also at a much cheaper price. As of recording this, Sony has not disclosed the actual price of this camera, but I do believe the ballpark around this is around 1500. So that's already like half the price of like an S3 or FX3. Of course, there are still some differences between those cameras, but this thing definitely packs a serious punch for how small it is. Matter of fact, let's go weigh this out. We're gonna set this one to pounds. Just gonna put the A6700 with the battery. It's about 1.1 pounds. So now let's put on the A7 IV, which is a full frame camera. And now we're looking at 1.4 pounds for the A7 IV. So not like a massive difference, but still a pretty noticeable difference. And here they are kind of side by side. Okay, so for me, having a smaller camera that can do almost everything that my A7S III can do is always a net positive. To be honest though, I used to gravitate towards more bigger cameras just because, you know, it just makes you look a little bit more professional and badass. But nowadays when I am traveling, hiking, or just, you know, going on fast paced shoots, I much rather prefer a smaller camera. The more simple and lightweight it is, for me is a lot more efficient, as long as I'm not sacrificing the quality and the capabilities of the camera. So I really do love how a lot of these newer cameras that are coming out are just getting smaller, better, and most importantly, cheaper. Okay, so now let's talk about the overall feel and build quality of this camera. And starting off with the grip itself, it does feel super solid and uh, really girthy. Definitely a nice upgrade if you're coming from the A6400 or even the A6000. It does have a matte finish to the camera, which feels and looks really premium, just like some of the more expensive Sony cameras like the A7S III or FX3 or FX30. We do got our dials over here on top with three custom profiles, which I'm a big fan of. I personally love having this on top, just makes uh, shooting a whole lot easier. We got our shutter dial and aperture dial over here as well. And we got our record button over here on the top with a custom button right next to it. And another really cool added bonus about this camera is that they've added this uh, picture, video, and s &Q dial, which I've only seen an A7 IV. So that's really cool that they've added this into the A6 series, definitely uh, beefing up this camera. And basically what this is, is that you know you know if you're shooting video, you just swap this into video. And if you're shooting photo, just swap it into photo. Makes things just a little bit more simple and easier to use. Menu button right over here. The viewfinder is on the left side of the camera, just like on all the APS-C cameras. We got our third custom button over here on the bottom, which we can remap. FN, you know, typical dial, everything, autofocus over here, playback button right over here. We do have a fully articulating screen where we can flip around so that we, we can see ourselves while we're vlogging or even just filming a video. Moving into the battery of this camera, this does take the much bigger Sony cameras, so definitely gonna have much more battery life compared to, you know, the A6400 or the A6000, which is definitely uh, recommended. Now going around onto the left side of the camera where we do have our SD card slot. Now there is only one SD card slot and this does not take the new type A express card. So you will need like one of these tough cards to be able to record in the highest resolution and highest frame rates and stuff like that. So, you know, just keep that in mind. If I go ahead and open up this slot right over here, this is where our mic jack is as well as a USB type C. And for our last little slot over here. Now, unfortunately, this does only have a mini HDMI. So uh, definitely something really important to consider. And right next to that is just our microphone jack. So 
uh, pretty solid. Nice Sony logos in the front right over here. And here's what the sensor looks like. Overall, the camera feels super solid and premium and also looks really nice. And most importantly, it's uh, super tiny and compact. Now I wanted to get into the functionalities of this camera and starting off with the file formats that you can record it. So on the A6700, you do have access to all the file formats like XAVC-SI in both HD and 4K, XAVC-S in both HD and 4K, and also XAVC-HS in 4K. And with all these file formats, you do have access to 10-bit 422 up to 120 frames per second, so that is really solid. And I do believe that when you do film in 120 frames per second, there is like a slight crop, maybe like a 1.2 2 or 1.3 X crop, so uh, something to keep in mind. And I just wanna say, the footage coming out of this camera is absolutely beautiful, super sharp, crisp, and lots of dynamic range. I shot all of my footage in S-Log3, so I had lots of color grading flexibility. Everything was color graded with my own custom S-Log3 LUTs, so if you guys do wanna get colors just like this with just a few clicks and also support the channel, there will be a link down below to my online store, and thank you so much for all of your guys' amazing support. Honestly, this channel would not be around without you guys. I would say the image quality coming out of this camera is nearly identical to that of my a7S 3 my a7 IV, or even my FX30. To be honest, if I were to put like sort of like a side-by-side -side comparison of like the footage coming out of those like different cameras, you probably would never even be able to tell the difference between any of them because the footage out of this thing is just that good. That's why I'm so excited about this thing. I mean, for a fraction of the price and something that is so much more smaller and compact, yet you're still able to get nearly identical image quality out of it. So pretty amazing. Now, something that really interested me about this new camera was that they also did add a back illuminate sensor for more low light capabilities. So I actually took this camera out to the fair and got some really nice low light footage. And even though I was at some relatively high ISOs, I was still able to get some super clean shots. Another thing that I wanted to take a look at was how good the stabilization was on this camera. So I did a bit of a test where I turned on the active stabilization and I also did another test where I turned off the active stabilization and only used the standard stabilization. And I just ran handheld while trying my best to keep it as stable as possible while I was filming shy. To be honest, the difference was pretty massive. It was definitely way more shakier without the active stabilization. And with the active stabilization, it was pretty solid, especially when you're using a wider angle lens. Anywhere from 35 millimeter and wider, I was able to get some pretty smooth gimbal-like shots, even though I was handheld. So that's really nice because I can still get some super smooth shots without my gimbal. And sometimes, you know, uh, you just don't want to take your gimbal out because it just makes the whole package way too big and heavy and you got all these different things going on. So still staying true to the super light and compact form factor that a APS-C camera brings to the table. Another really important thing to note is that when you do film at 120 frames per second, you are actually not able to use active stabilization. Only the standard stabilization will be usable. So just keep that in mind. Now, another thing that I wanted to take a close look at was the autofocus performance. So this camera has Sony's new AI autofocus system where basically every aspect of the autofocus system is improved. It can recognize humans better. It can even recognize cars, animals, birds. And for humans, it can even recognize the posture of your subject. Like it doesn't even need the face or eyes uh, for the camera to be able to recognize that that is a human subject that you want to be focused on. So some pretty mind blowing stuff that I don't really fully understand. But Sony does claim that the eye autofocus performance itself has been improved by about 60% with this new AI technology compared to some of my older cameras like my A7S III or my A7 IV that does not have that AI autofocus technology. And while filming, I did absolutely notice a big difference. I just felt like it was 
locked onto my subject much more uh, consistently and it was never really like focus pulling. So definitely felt more reliable when I was shooting on this thing. Definitely a nice upgrade if you're a running gun style filmmaker kind of on the fly and kind of fast paced and you need your autofocus to lock onto your subject without it kind of uh, failing too often. Now I did find some pretty bad rolling shutter on this camera so that is unfortunate and something to definitely keep in mind if that is a deal breaker for you. Now, Sony has also released a new shotgun microphone that would be perfect to pair along with this camera. I think this is one of their smallest shotgun microphones that they've released, but this one is also a very unique one. And this little thing right here redefines how shotgun microphones work by providing eight different selectable audio modes all inside this tiny little compact device. So as you can see, this dial right here allows you to change sort of the direction of where your mic is focused on. So previously on older Sony mics, you only had like three different options. One was like a narrow, sort of a wider, and then an omnidirectional, but this one has eight different modes. So as you can see right here, it's pretty self-explanatory as to how you want to direct your mic. Uh, this one is like a normal mode. If you want it to be a little bit wider, maybe where you're having two subjects speaking, you can set it to that. Obviously, if you go on to here, this is omnidirectional. And this is where it gets really interesting because now you can actually switch it to where it's picking up the audio from behind the mic, which is super useful, especially if you're vlogging or like, let's say you're in first person mode and you're you know, talking behind the camera, you can actually just spin this around and focus the audio recording on behind the mic. And another really interesting mode is this one where it focuses on behind and forward, which is super useful. I, I think that's gonna be a quality of life feature for a lot of content creators because I find myself uh, having to like spin my mic around, you know, in order to get that crisp quality, but I no longer have to do that because all I have to do is just spin this dial and I'm able to get some pretty crisp and clean audio. I thought this was super innovative and definitely something that was much needed in the content creation space. And if I go ahead and just throw this on right here on the top, connect this on the hot shoe and this is sort of what it looks like, super small and compact. And you know what? I'm actually gonna uh, throw on a lens real quick and test out the audio. All right, testing out the audio. I have the mic set to behind, just kind of trying to hear how that sounds. I'm gonna flip it around now and this audio should sound pretty bad and muffled because it is pointing behind. Now I'm actually gonna shift it towards forward and behind and let's see how that sounds. So right now I'm kind of speaking behind the camera and now I'm gonna turn it around, try to get uh, some nice audio, testing out the audio on this mic, seeing how well it sounds and how well it performs. So yeah, super innovative and really awesome to see that Sony uh, is creating something like this because I know that this is something that I'm definitely gonna find very useful and also I think a lot of you guys will find this useful as well. Okay, so who might this camera be for? Well, in my opinion, I would recommend this camera to someone who is more of a hybrid shooter. Also someone who is a little bit more advanced and wants to be able to have like control of the manual settings and all these uh, dials and presets versus something like on the ZVE line where things are much more simple and you don't really have all those custom dials and custom buttons to be able to manually control all of your settings. I personally like having the control and extra dials that you know this camera brings. It just is something that I've always been used to when I started shooting. And it's not that like you can't do that on the ZVE either, but it just makes it a little bit more easy when you have all these like buttons and dials. This camera would also be great for someone who just wants more quality in their footage without really having to, you know, break the bank like with some of the other Sony cameras costing upwards of like $3,000. I think this one is like a solid middle ground where it's still packed with a lot of pro features. Obviously, a really important thing to keep in mind though is that this is a APS-C sensor, so you will have to adopt into sort of the APS-C lens ecosystem, which Sony does have a ton of really amazing APS-C lenses to choose from. So that's honestly not really a problem. And if you do have any full frame lenses anyways, you could always still just uh, use those full frame lenses on this camera and it'll still work just fine. Honestly, if I didn't have like four different cameras, already, I would probably pick this one up. I think this would be a great workhorse of a camera and also a perfect first camera to start off with if you are someone that is new getting into this space. 
Overall, this passes the Hempu check and I think this is a phenomenal camera for the price. If you guys have any questions, any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment down below and I will get back to all of you guys. If you guys are interested in my custom s 3 LUTs or my Lightroom presets, feel free to check out the link down below in the description. All of your support truly is appreciated and really helps the channel keep going. Thank you once again for watching and if you made it all the way till the very end, you are absolutely awesome and I think that's it. Till next time, later.